Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. When dental amalgam was first introduced, the proper mixing method employed the use of the mortal and the pestle, with the mixing time of approximately one minute. Today, we utilize a mechanical device, the amalgamator, which simplified the process and reduced the mixing time to a few seconds. There are two methods most frequently used to prepare amalgam. First, the pre-measured disposable capsule. Second, the non-disposable capsule, which requires that the mercury and the alloy be dispensed just prior to mixing. Now, let's watch a dental assistant de demonstrate the procedure for mixing amalgam. The pre-measured capsules are made in a two-chamber design. In the upper chamber is the mercury and the pestle. In the lower chamber is the alloy. And using the pre-measured capsule, note the color of the plungers. This type of coating is used by manufacturers to distinguish between a single and a double spill of amalgam. In this case, yellow indicates a single and orange indicates a double spill. Once you have depressed the plunger and forced the mercury and pestle into the lower chamber, the capsule is then ready to be placed into the amalgamator. And according to manufacturer's direction, mix for the correct amount of time. This type of amalgamator uses a mixing time of 15 seconds for a single spill and 20 seconds for a double spill. By moving the adjustable stop tab, the timer can be set for the amount of time to be mixed. And using a single spill, the timer will be set for 15 seconds. Pull the stop tab to the on position, release, and allow the amalgam to mix. When the mix is completed, remove the capsule, tap the capsule sharply on the table or hard surface. This will aid in releasing any amalgam that may adhere to the sides. Then open the capsule, place the material in a dappened dish, remove the pestle, and discard the capsule. The amalgam is then ready to be loaded and placed into the prepared tooth. The second method is the non-disposable capsule, and using this technique, the following materials are needed. The capsule, which has a metal pestle, the proportioner for the mercury and the alloy. The proportioner has a spring arm, which releases the mercury and alloy into the capsule, and an adjuster for the mercury and alloy ratio. Once the pestle is placed in the larger end of the capsule, you may dispense the mercury and the alloy. When dispensing, it is important to remember to keep the proportioner in a vertical position. This will ensure that the proper amount of mercury and alloy will be dispensed and also prevent spillage. Place the dispenser over the capsule, press, and release quickly. In this instance, a single spill has been dispensed. If a double spill is desired, repeat the process. Secure the top and place in the amalgamator. Set the timer and mix for 15 seconds. When using the non-disposable capsules, take the mix one step farther. Remove the capsule, open, and remove the pestle. Resecure the top and place in the amalgamator. Turn the timer to the on position and release. This process is termed mulling. Mulling will gather the amalgam into a ball and help to ensure the capsule is left free of amalgam particles as well as enhance the mix. Again, place in the dappened dish and load the carrier. 
Regardless of which method is used, the objective of mixing is to initiate the reaction between the mercury and the alloy and to produce a mix that can be inserted into the prepared tooth. If the amalgam is manipulated properly, a very serviceable restoration will result that will provide good clinical service. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.